what the Falcons do, rise up. Welcome to Rise Up Reactions, the show where we talk all things Falcons, NFL, Georgia sports, and in general the sports news of the day. I'm your host, Dr. Lee Denning, lifelong sports enthusiast, particularly of football. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about the Falcons wide receiving core for the 2022 campaign. It's going to be a hodgepodge of characters from all sorts of backgrounds in the NFL, uh, and mostly it's a bunch of wide receiver threes and wide receiver fours that are going to be forced into the wide receiver two and three roles. So... Let's start with quarterback, first of all. We need to know what we're going to be getting from Marcus Mariota. Looking back at his healthy seasons when he first entered the league, let's first say he has never completed all 16 games in a season as a starter. So, with that in mind, it's going to be really hard to get a good idea of how many pass plays per game we're going to be getting out of him. But if you look back at hit the beginning of his career versus the middle to end of his career to this point, there's a tale of two players. In the first three seasons in the NFL, he was averaging 30 to 31 pass plays per game, which is great for depth for wide receivers. You can get a lot of targets that way. It's great for the fantasy purposes. But in general, you're going to get a lot of good production out of receivers because there's more targets to go around. In the last two years as a starter, though, he was only averaging 22 to 23 target, uh, sorry, pass plays per game. Not nearly as good. However, in Atlanta, I think he's going to be behind in most of his games, and I think we're going to have to throw the ball to catch up. So I think he's going to have to revert back to what he was doing in the beginning of his career, find a way to be more of a pocket passer, and probably he'll average somewhere in the neighborhood of 28 to 30 pass plays per game. And again, most of that is because I think we're going to be down – often and having to come back in most games. So I still think we're going to struggle with the run game, but if we can find an identity with Damian Williams, or I hope not, we're going to talk about a second quarter, Patterson or Tyler Algier, then maybe we don't have to throw as often and we get production in other ways. But right out the gate, Drake London, he's going to be our wide receiver one. There's no question about this. In his last year at USC, he only played eight games. He had he had 88 receptions, 1,084 uh, 1, yards, and seven touchdowns. Instantly better than any player on the wide receiving core right now. Now, wide receiver two. This is where the question comes in. Does Corderell stay at running back at almost 30 years old, or does he move back to wide receiver primarily and let some of the younger guys take over? He's probably ultimately going to be used as a back in some regard, even though we already have three others on the roster after the draft. Um, but he's a guy who last year had 52 receptions, 548 yards, and five touchdowns. He was second on the team in receptions behind Russell Gage last year, who's no longer on the team, so all of those targets are vacated. I don't know that his target share goes up all that much, but then we also have some interesting additions to the team this year, one of them being Brian Edwards, who traded a fifth-round pick to get a conditional seventh, and Brian Edwards out, uh, off of the Las Vegas Raiders. He's entering into his third season. He's not turned into the player that Las Vegas wanted him to be. However, he also was under the tutelage of John Gruden, who is no longer in the good graces of the NFL, and who knows if he can finally turn into a good player. He's a South Carolina grad, six foot three, very prototypical receiver build, and I think he's going to have a renaissance here in, in Atlanta. So, again, his, his last season, he had 34 receptions, 571, uh, 571 yards, and three touchdowns. He was a third-round pick, number 81 overall in the 2019 draft, I believe. But, anyways... I think he'll be good. And then we also have a guy who, at that wide receiver 2-3 position, really more of a slot guy because of his size, Olamide Zacchaeus. He is a 5'8 receiver. He is incredibly fast, but he last year kind of broke out a little bit. 31 receptions, 406 yards, 3 touchdowns. He's going to have to step up as a veteran on the team who knows uh, our coach's offense. So, again, I don't know who's going to end up as wide receiver 2 and 3 in that bunch. It probably should be... Patterson and Edwards with Olamide coming in as a primarily slot receiver. However, we also have Kyle Pitts in the mix, who might as well be a receiver too. I'm not really going to dive into him because his production is going to be self-evident. But just imagine about 100 of the targets are going to him and about 100 of the targets are going to Drake London. It's only going to leave about, give or take, 250 to 300 targets for the rest of the team. So, moving right along, wide, uh, the wide receiver 4, 5, 6 area, 
we did just make an interesting addition with the uh, signing of Geronimo Allison, who formerly was a Green Bay Packer, which is where most of us would know him from. He opted out of the 2020 season for COVID, and then he barely played for the Lions. Uh, last year didn't really have any impact, so I can only compare his previous seasons. He's more of a big, typical, prototypical receiver, six foot three. I don't have a lot of information on it, but he's pretty much been a wide receiver for everywhere he's been so far. This is going to be his opportunity where he can rise up and get to that wide receiver two or three role. And again, I think it's very wide open for him to do that. But right out the gate, I think he starts at wide receiver four. Uh, then we also have a couple of other guys. Alden Tate out of Cincinnati, six foot five receiver, also has not had a great career, but was highly touted as a prospect in his draft year. Again, Cincinnati is doing well right now. They didn't need him. They cut him, and now we get to benefit from potentially a diamond in the rough with him. Um, and then we also have Demir Bird uh, out of Chicago. He's fast. He is incredibly fast. He's five foot nine, runs a four two eight. Uh, he was with Chicago last year. Had twenty six receptions, three hundred twenty nine yards, and one touchdown. I see him being that either wide receiver five or kind of another slot receiver that we can use, or possibly our special teams guy, the special teams receiver. It wouldn't hurt uh, my feelings to see him and Zacchaeus both in the back uh, for punt returns or for kickoffs to potentially take the ball and, and take it down. I think they're both two of our fastest guys, and they're some of our more elusive players. So, again, I think these are guys that are going to be good for our team, but you're not talking about the top tier of talent in the NFL. All of these guys are going to have to prove themselves this year in Atlanta to really warrant extending them beyond this year. Um, and then you also have at wide receiver 6'7", uh, Connor L. Hodge out of uh, Chicago. Yeah, don't know much about him. We'll see what happens with him. He's not going to be a guy that I look to compete for a wide receiver 1-3 through three role. Probably going to be just a relief guy if he even makes the team. So we'll see what happens with him. But that's kind of where I feel like the receiver, uh, the receiver stand at this point. There's still a lot of time left in the offseason to make moves. There's still some big names out there that haven't been acquired yet. Odell Beckham Jr., not going to be healthy until midseason. Probably ain't coming to Atlanta. Julio Jones, we're already paying him $15.5 million. Julio, just come home. Take a vet men deal and just come home. We're already paying you $15.5 million this year in dead cap. Just play. Please come back and let us get some use out of you before you retire here. Um, likely he will end up on some team as a vet men contract just for the year, and then he'll probably get uh, have a renaissance for his last two or three years, similar to how A.J. Brown's doing now. But, you know, let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is our receiving core as bad on paper as it sounds? Are they going to be that bad in real life? Are they going to be surprisingly sneaky good? What do you think is going to happen this year? Just let me know what you think. If you like this video and this content, consider hitting the like button and subscribing. It will really help the channel grow. And until next time, rise up.